guys. Um, glad to see you again. It's been a while. I think last time we uh, gave an update or chatted, we had just received four foster kids, a sibling set of four. That was, I think, about three months ago. We had them about three and a half months. Mm -hmm. um, they just left. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But So we just wanted to give a quick update on that. Mm -hmm on that placement and then just on foster care in general because we know that uh, it's tough to be a foster parent and this world of foster care is dark and ugly sometimes and this last placement definitely um, showed that to us uh, but it also like it's just a testament of of how awesome and amazing God is um, before this last placement uh, Lindsay and I had just pray to God that we would get another Guys, chance. Can I put my underwear on? <laughs> That's Tucker. Um, that God would give us another chance to do it better. Um, the last time we had four foster kids, so eight kids total, um, that ended didn't end well. Um, I think we've talked about it before. We sent them away. We said we couldn't do it anymore, and we wanted to get out of foster care. Um, and then we talked about God just talking to us, bringing us back into foster care. And so since that happened, we had just prayed for a chance to do it better. You know, we just asked God, give us another chance. Help us to, to do it better a second time. Um, and he did that. He gave us a sibling set of four. So we were at eight again. And um, it had a lot of challenges, more challenges than the previous eight I would say the previous four um, we were investigated at least three but maybe even four times with this last placement um, DHS came over twice um, but there were two other ones that they just kind of didn't even come over because they had just been here like a few days earlier um, so in the last time we were investigated one time and said that's it we're out all right, sorry guys, we had to move inside because the kids were getting a little loud <laughs> in our little pool, so we're back. This case was, even our caseworker and our agency said this was one of the hardest cases that they've had, um, and the parents were some of the most difficult parents that they've ever dealt with. Um, so, I mean, it was a very difficult, very hard case. So we dropped them off at visits, and there's supposed to be supervision, and... Uh, all the kids would be in the parents' car, no supervision around. We'd give them stuff to sneak back to our house or um, ask them questions about what goes on here. We'd tell them to try to steal things from us and bring to them. We'd turn that in and tell DHS that and nothing ever happened there. Um, but their parents, one time we brought uh, <laughs> their, their four-year-old, right? Uh, or, sorry. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> says nerd! <laughs> <laughs> um, we brought their four-year-old to visit, uh, and he had a shirt. It was his favorite shirt. We took him to his visit, and his parents complained, one, that his shirt was dirty, and two, that it was too small. So they took his clothes from him, our clothes, um, but that turned into an investigation. That his shirt was too small and it was dirty. Um, and it was just things like that constantly, all the time. We, we would pick them up and be on our way home and they would tell Lindsay, yeah, our mom says you don't feed us very much or you don't have enough clothes for us. Um, so just, they would attack us through their kids. Pretty much every week. Close to the end of, of their time with us, uh, DHS came out to interview them, the kids about a separate, something totally separate. Um, but then they en ended up talking to them about what was going on here, us not feeding them and whatever. Allegedly, not Allegedly, them. yeah. Obviously, none of these were founded. <laughs> they were all unfounded. We're feeding them. We're, they have plenty of clothes, all that stuff. But, um, but the last one, DHS came out and talked to the kids, and then they pulled me and Lindsay away into our bedroom and, and said that the parents don't want the kids going to church with us anymore. Um, they actually said the parents forbid the kids to go to church with us. And they wanted us to stop praying with the kids at the table and stop talking about the Bible. Because um, every morning at breakfast, if I'm home, um, and then Lindsay will do 
if I'm not home, Lindsay will do it. Um, but we'll pray and we'll do a little devotion, a little Bible time where we get into the Bible, we talk about it. Um, and two of their kids said that, you know, they wanted to follow Jesus. They gave their life to him. And they told their dad this, and he told them that they weren't believers, they weren't Christians. He got really angry with them about it. So I think that's where this was all coming from. Um, but so anyway, DHS told us that we couldn't take them to church anymore, we couldn't pray with them, and we couldn't read the Bible in our home with them around anymore. And were we okay with that? <laughs> well, uh, we both said, no, we're not okay with that. If they're in our house, they're going to go to church. I'm going to try to explain a little bit about what we were talking about with DHS. We feel that God brought us into foster care to love kids and bring the gospel to the kids that are in our home. The Great Commission. Go and spread the gospel to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just go and spread the word. Um, DHS came in and, and told us, we want you to love the kids, but not share the gospel with them keep that separate um, and we didn't feel that that was something that we could do uh, they're one and the same to us we love the kids and we share the gospel with them they're going to go to church with us if they're in our house and we're going to pray and we're going to read the bible those are things we're not compromising on we're not going to stop doing that so dhs said okay well we're going to have to probably move them but we'll let you know and you know the rest of the week went by we hadn't heard anything else from anybody about this meeting, what we thought was a pretty big deal, what DHS said to us. So I was just getting ready that afternoon to, to get ready to go get them. Um, and Lindsay got a call from one of the ladies at our agency who called and said that there was really no need for us to go pick the kids up because the parents had told DHS uh, that they didn't want the kids back in our home and our agency had told DHS that they didn't want the kids to be a part of our agency anymore. That was how that placement ended. Without saying too much, it was dangerous things that we were dealing with, uh, things that, you know, compromised our safety. Yeah. So we were just leaning hard on God, feeling like it doesn't feel like he's telling us to send them away, but it was just super challenging. We just really felt like our safety was compromised with um, these kids' behavior. Yeah. Yeah. As much as we loved them and, and they were good kids and God was working on their hearts, they were very much also influenced yeah. by their parents. The oldest, the nine-year-old boy, it got to a point where he had, uh, we had to have him in the same room with us all the time. We couldn't trust him to even just stay outside on the playground with our kids. We, he had to be in the same room as us where we could watch him and see him every minute of the day. And, I mean, it got to a point where, you know, if I'm at work and Lindsay's here, well, there's seven other kids. It was sad because, you know, there you could see that, you know, there were times where he was a, a great kid thoughtful and caring but with his parents influence I mean we couldn't even trust him to be on his own with other kids and so there were so many times where we thought we can't go on like this this isn't safe or it's not yeah. practical or doable and we just always felt God strengthening us to keep going mm -hmm. and there was just always enough grace to cover each challenge in each situation and then for God to be the one to finally move them. It wasn't our yeah. decision is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it was just such a different experience than how things ended a year ago when mm -hmm. we had kids leave because we got scared. For him to move them was his grace on our family too. I mostly just want this to be an encouragement to other foster families that you know you can go through those really hard situations and those really hot fires mm -hmm. and God will be with you he walks before you and behind you and he surrounds you and yeah. he just allows you to keep going yeah I mean constantly you know throughout the day we would just be relying on his promises that you know and we would I would send Lindsay Bible verses while I was at work and she would tell me which what 
oh, this just happened, this just happened, and just to keep focusing back on God. And I mean, he promises to never leave us or forsake us. Um, he doesn't promise that, you know, following him is going to be easy. And he doesn't promise that once we follow him, we're not going to struggle, we're not going to go through fires. I mean, I think he says the opposite, because he went through those things. But to kind of wrap this all up, our kids obviously, we had no idea that we wouldn't see those kids again. Our daughter especially was really connected with their little girl. Um, and so, you know, when they left Friday, hey, we'll see you guys Monday, our kids were kind of counting on that. When Monday came around, and that didn't happen, we told our kids, and our daughter was pretty devastated. And so we wanted to just get away and not think about it for a while. My parents were up um, north of here, camping up in Loveland. So we thought, let's just go up there. Let's get a hotel with a little water park in it. Just kind of forget about this weekend, forget about the past three months, <laughs> uh, and just kind of take a deep breath, exhale, and just have some fun. Um, and that's what we did, and I think it was awesome. Our kids had a great time. And, and it served as a really good yeah. distraction instead of just this quiet house going from eight kids to four yeah. kids. It, to fill up some of the quiet time with distractions yeah. has been our best strategy yeah. when kids leave. And our daughter is still you know, working through it, and we're helping her work through it, and um, God is helping her work through it. Um, and it'll take, it just takes time. So I think most people think with foster care that the hardest part is when you love these kids and then they leave. And I just feel like I want to encourage you or somebody who's doing foster care or thinking about doing foster care that that is a hard part. But the amazing things that God is doing in our family and in the kids that we got to love that is so much bigger than the sadness yeah. the sadness is there and but even our nine-year-old daughter would say she's still glad we went through this and she's still glad she had yeah. that sister to love for those 100 days and um you know those kids have something that will never be taken from them and we have new things grown in us that will never be taken from us one thing that we've all clung to this whole time is god just saying his grace is sufficient for us um, and it is. His grace is sufficient for the kids coming here and the, what it, the things that happened and it's sufficient for them. So we also took a bunch of video when we were at the hotel and at the water park and spending time with grandma and grandpa. Just spending time as a family and letting the Lord heal our hearts. Yeah. And thanks for listening and we hope that this is an encouragement to somebody out there. kids just left it was really sad so God blessed us with enough money to be able to go to this really fun hotel and spend time with grandma and grandpa it's so fun bye